I'm Stefan Bauman. I would like to invite you on a special journey. Come along with me as we experience the thrill of painting outdoors. A three-day workshop that will change your art forever. Encounter the grandeur. Feel the excitement. In one of America's most stunning locations, Mount Shasta. I'm Stephen Bauman, and welcome to another podcast. Today, we approach the subject of painting large, go big or go home. There's a significance that one receives when they actually view a large work of art. It embodies every bit of our senses, and it inspires us for greatness and possibility. Somehow we have lost that in the art world. We have gone to adopting small little landscapes done on location or small little paintings done of people. Thinking that, oh, painting quickly and painting in the moment or plain air painting is actually the new way of painting. But the reality is, is that when we go to these museums and these galleries, we want to see big pieces. We want to see monuments that are created by artists, that inspire us, that make us feel like we want to pull up a bench and sit and stare at it. So sit back and relax and listen to a discussion that I have with one of my students about painting large paintings. Paint big or go home. The problem with art over the last 10, 20 years is that we've done all this plain air painting and the problem with all the plain air painting, it's, uh, it's boring to, to take a look at these, these uh, small little insignificant paintings. And uh, you go to a gallery and you've lost all those big grand paintings. You know, and we've given it up to these little insignificant ones. And the problems with plain air painting too is that, you know, collectors have gotten uh, wise and they go, wow. I could own an original Bauman for a thousand dollars. And I'm not just saying my paintings, but you know, just really big artists in general are getting, you know, a thousand bucks for a big painting. It's, I mean, for a little painting. And people are like, oh, I'm satisfied. They don't have to spend 20 or 30,000 having this huge, big piece in their house. But that big piece is like the center of the house. People, decorators love to decorate around a painting like that because it makes everything. So once you go big, it's like, wow. And then once you go big, it's hard to go small again. You know, it becomes very addictive because the impact is so much. I mean, I remember the biggest painting that I can recall that really made an impact in my world was a painting that I painted when I was about 14. And it was a painting of a bunch of mallard ducks. And the painting was so six or seven feet tall and another eight feet long. It hung over my parents' stairway going up to the second story because it was so big there was not another wall you could put it on. But it marked my, my intentions of how I will paint forever. And that was painting large. And in fact, when I was in Southwest Art, uh, they did an article on me in 1980. And I said, I paint big because my world is big. How can I, how can I paint everything that I see in a tiny little eight by 10? That's inches, you know, like the little tiny paintings. And so I think when you start painting large is that's when you actually start painting. Um, but unfortunately, we go to galleries and we don't see those grand, grand uh, paintings anymore. And it's really sad because never before in, in the history of our lives have 
people had so many big houses with big walls in them. It's a shame because these big walls, they could really have some big art and artists could have a lot of fun painting them. So going big is going, going good. It's a good idea to do big paintings. Get out of your comfort zones. But then you need to have a big concept, a big idea, something that is worthy of that. You know, I was inspired myself to do the Mallard paintings at a very young age. And that's because in wintertime, uh, we had a lagoon in our backyard and periodically the, the ducks would get frozen into the ice. They would just kind of be sleeping on top of the water and then, you know, they would be frozen in and they, get, they couldn't get out. And so the, the Humane Society would go out and shoot them. And I was so horrified that they would do that. It's like shooting sitting ducks, you know? And so I was so horrified by that. So I decided to do an homage to those ducks and set them free. And so there was this, you know, it was a grouping of six or eight mallard ducks that you know, were flying uh, in front of the viewer. And that was my inspiration is to, is to let them go instead of be shot. And so, you know, it was a big monumental piece, but boy, it changed everything in my, in my whole painting career and stuff. And for the longest time, I didn't do anything smaller than uh, a 40 by 60 or 40 by 80 or 60 by 80. Everything I did was huge. But then somehow I got into plain air painting and then everything got really small. And like really small and almost like insignificant. Almost like painting didn't matter anymore. As long as I did the scene, it didn't matter. There was no more than I thought, you know, oh, I can't do this anymore. You know, so even when I go plain air painting, I try to go at least bigger. I've got boxes and boxes of plein air paintings that are like 8 by 10, 11 by 14. These are puny little pieces. And when we think about art and the grandeur of art, it really should encompass the world. It should be large, beautiful, big canvases expressing light and transforming people to, to, to be in places. I think that's with Bierstadt. That's what he wanted. I mean, at one point, Bierstadt was really popular and he was a, a painter from the 1880s, 1890s. He was really popular. And then I was like Thomas Kincaid. And all of a sudden he got, he disappeared. And the salon, the Impressionists came and, and the big World's Fair uh, that they had. Bierstadt didn't even make it in. It was all of these Impressionist paintings. And they were big too. The French were painting big. And a lot of the American impression, uh, painters were big. And when you think of a museum, you think of big paintings on the walls. So big is definitely where it's at. And so Bierstadt said, you know, if I'm not going to be in the World's Fair um, and have my paintings there because everybody went to Impressionism and he kind of, kind of, you know, drifted off into doing realism and, you know, kind of drifted away from popularity because we do follow trends. Um, and so he decided to rent a building across the street from the World's Fair. And he painted a painting so big at the end of the, this, this hallway. And he'd have these, these lights on the ceiling, you know, the, the, the skylights. And he pointed the skylights down so they would light up this painting. And he uh, opened it up to the public and people paid a nickel to get a cardboard tube. And they would walk into this auditorium with this painting on a huge platform as if they were standing at the edge of a, of a cliff somewhere with the railing. And he, and he rigged it so that, you know, so that you felt like you were there. And he would open up the skylights and the scene would open up and you would take this little cardboard tube and you'd hold it up to your eye and you would look at the painting as if you were there on location. That's how big this painting was. It was phenomenal. And that's the way that he got into being part of the show without being a show. So that's tenacity. That's what you do when, when you don't make it into a contest and they're going to have a show, then rent the building next door and have your own show. But anyway, I digress. That's a whole nother conversation. But yeah, when you go big and grand, you capture the imagination. So when you're working on a big painting, 
you it's a lot of real estate and it takes you a lot of time and it's really quint is it's really difficult to try to paint a painting and then have to repaint it and repaint it and especially when you've got that much real estate that much. so the key to it is to paint what you see at the moment you see it so if you see light brown you paint light brown if you see dark brown you paint dark brown you don't paint the whole painting yellow and blue and then go back in just to repaint it, just to repaint it. Because the initial colors have nothing to do with your final outcome. Why would you have painted that if that's the effect you want? If you want to try to get that effect in your painting, why would you spend any time wasting painting something that is so contrary to, to what the finished product is going to be just to cover the canvas? Why not you know, absorb some steps? And paint what you see as you see it right now. Like the whole sky being so yellow. It's like, that's not a yellow. When you're painting it, you're going, this can't be a yellow that I'm going to use in the sky. So it doesn't do you any good to lay any of it down. And I think that's kind of a problem that people have with bad habits from acrylic. Is that they put in a color and then they put in another color. I mean, with acrylic painting, you almost have to do that because you can't get the effect of oils that well. You know, when acrylic paint dries, it dries flat. Where oil paint, the, the, when it dries, the little particles are suspended and uh, light can show through them. Having, having an initial color that's like so far out in, in the hemisphere isn't really doing you any good. I mean, you just paint what you see like right now. And then you paint that right now. And then you paint that right now. The colors that you see when you hit a place where the colors change, change your colors. Because otherwise you're going to have to do it next time. Or you'll have to do it next time and next time and next time, depending on when you finally are going to choose to paint the colors that are actually there. If you would take the time out, because the amount of time that it takes you to paint a, a, a large canvas is, is you know, exponentially longer than if you just do a small painting. Um, every, every time you repaint something, you're taking hours away from, from your painting, requiring the painting to be, you know, just something you never get done or it just takes forever. So paint what you see like right now, especially on these big these big canvases. But if you put your values in as you see them and your temperature as you see them and your color as you see them, you would be almost done with this painting by now. It'd just be putting some detail in. Jeez. It's surprising that people buy big paintings. I mean, my first part of my career, everything I did was huge. And it seemed like I could sell those faster than, than um, yeah, any of my other work. There's a, there's a gal in Ashland, huge amount of money. I mean, she makes maybe a half a million dollars a year from what I hear. Her husband, her husband does all the marketing. She does the painting. It's just aspen trees. And they sell them because they're so large. And I guess, you know, they're, they're great paintings to put into lobbies and stuff. But they're really not good paintings. They're really sloppy and ugly. And I think the thing that, that makes them so, so warranted is that it was just size. Like size does matter. Size, the size of these things are so, it's like walking into a, into a, a forest itself. But unfortunately, there's no sensitivity. There's no, there's no even uh, a, a, a glimpse of trying to make them look more realistic. They just look big and bold and palette knifey and colory and, and stuff, and they sell like crazy. Big pictures have big impact. Big pictures have big emotional draw. Big pictures command big prices. And big pictures get you noticed. If you have uh, small canvases, sometimes they take you as long as it takes to do a big canvas. So I have worked on nine by 12s or eight by 10s for three or four hours on location. And really I could have done a 12 by 16 on location with a little bit larger brushes and spent the same amount of time and had gotten more money for per hour for that time. 
when you think about presence, yeah, if you do an eight by ten, you might that painting might end up in the bathroom. That painting might end up in a hallway with six other paintings that are insignificant. And that's the problem with the whole planar painting. Everybody wants to go small because it's easy. If you're going to go outdoors and paint, paint big, you know, paint larger, at least 12 by 16. So at least you have something. A painting that's 12 by 16 will actually find itself in a place of prominence. Something like, like in your living room or, or in an office uh, on, a, on an entry wall. Um, because, you know, there's not enough room for a 12 by 16 with a frame in most bathrooms. Yeah, you know, so they have to go somewhere. But a little eight by ten painting, it's like, ah, they might stick it in a frame and put it on a shelf. Who wants that? Paint big or go home. So there you have it. If you want to get noticed, paint it big. If you want any more information about my videos, go to www.stephenbauman.com and there you can get all the information you need to know about my videos, my PBS show, and you can register for a free book there, everything I know about painting. So be sure to go to my website at www.stephenbauman.com. If you want more information about coaching and taking your art to the next level, and remember I take artists at all different levels, including beginners, you can reach me at my phone number at 415-606-9074. That's my home phone number. Uh, information is on my website under coaching, but I suggest just give me a call. Let's chat about your work, see if we could find a different direction or a new direction, or even get you started in painting altogether. So give me a call, go to my website, and until next time we meet again during one of my podcasts, do good work, and remember to always paint with passion. Have a grand day.